people from, amen, all of the folks. We thank God for you. Amen. All right, adamantbeliever.com forward slash, look at somebody and say, the dark side of Easter. <laughs> well, well, you know, we, the church is growing rapidly, and so I'm getting a lot of, I've gotten a whole lot of questions from people concerning celebrating different um, facets of Easter and what do we believe in different things. So I just want to just shed light on some things this morning to kind of give you an idea of what's going on with Easter. Is that all right? Yes, Adamantbeliever.com forward slash the dark side of Easter dot PDF. Now, the biggest misconception, the, the problem here is that the line of what they call it demarcation that divides Catholicism from Christianity has been erased. And it was purposely erased. So now Catholics are considered the same as Christians. The problem is a word was dropped out of it, and that word is Protestant. Look at somebody and say Protestant. So it's really not Christians and uh, Catholics. It's what type of Christian you are. Are you a Catholic Christian or are you a Protestant Christian? If you're a Catholic Christian, then you're not a Christian at all. I'm going to get in trouble for this one, but I'm already in trouble. I stay. That's, that's where I, hey, if you're already in trouble, you ain't, what? So, <laughs> that's the difference. Catholicism is not Christianity. Catholicism is a hybrid form of Christianity created by Satan. So it is created with an anti-Christ leader who is the Pope. Okay? So the Pope's the anti-Christ, priests are anti-Christ, the whole leadership of the Catholic Church. But the problem is that the Protestant Church has mirrored Catholicism. So denominations have gone over, had the Pope lay hands on them and bless them. That's Church of God in Christ, uh, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, uh, UPC, uh, just all of these different holiness church movements and not excluding Lutheran, Episcopalian, and all of them, United Methodists as well. United Methodists is pretty much Catholic 100%. They believe the, the, the exact same statement of faith. So what we're talking here is we're talking a merge. We're talking about a merge and parallels running together, which causes confusion when it comes to certain celebrations. Okay? I'm going to try to explain this the best I can. I got a lot of videos on this stuff, so you just kind of have to bear with me. I can't get it all in this message, but I have unlimited resources. If you go on the on our website, you can get information on mostly all of this stuff. Especially my recommendation is The Truth Behind Hip Hop Part 7, Mother of All Gods. It, it tells you the founding and creation of Catholicism and how it came to be, why it came to be. So that's a very good one to watch and get a good understanding of the dark side of Easter. Now, we ain't in here celebrating the dark side of Easter. Actually, we're not in here celebrating Easter at all. We're in here celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right? Okay, so get understanding. Now, now there's going to be folks, you know, folks just, everybody's woke now, and everybody knows more than the preacher now. Everybody knows more than the preacher. As long as I've been preaching 30 some years, all it takes is somebody to click on my content and then they'll go in the comments to correct me with five minutes of understanding. You just got saved or you mad saved. You know, when a person is angry saved, then they don't like nobody's content. So you're just a troll at that point. Have you ever seen a troll? That's an old ugly angry thing. Well, that's what they do. They want attention. They go around and correct everything. There's certain people, you know, oh, bless me. This message bless me. Oh, this message was wonderful. This message bless me. Why so dark in there? 
block. I mean, because it's stupid. It's dark in here because you ain't here. You don't know how dark it is. If you come in here, it ain't that dark. Amen. And it was much darker in the club you was in. I mean, don't, don't, do just, folk crazy. Hey man, and are you even a human? You might be that man with the glasses just going from computer to computer. Remember him? Just <laughs> yeah, but it's just stupid. So please don't comment. Don't just, I mean, take what I say. If you don't like it, go find something that you like. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. And that's it. This is what God has given me. And if you don't trust it, then that's, that's on you. Amen. We got a church full of folk that trust the truth that comes through this microphone. Amen. Whoever is in here preaching. All right. So anyway, so Christian and Catholic, that's the way I laid it out. I didn't do Protestant and Catholic because I don't believe Catholics are Christians. Okay. So, and then the, these are their different crosses. You got the, you know, the cross that's popping and all beautiful and all of that and then you got you know Ser Serapis Bay or whoever he is one of the ascension masters on it posing as Jesus and then you have the Christian old rugged cross y'all remember that the old rugged cross yeah because the cross is nothing to celebrate it's nothing to dress up with diamonds and jewels that's amen it's a weapon of death and it killed our savior so I don't need you trying to make the cross look beautiful Covering it in gold and all that. No, he rose after he died. He didn't rise from the cross. So you don't celebrate the cross. Amen. So I don't need no fancy gold cross with diamonds and rubies in it and all of that. No, it's a weapon of death. So it's old wooden. And that's a nice looking one. It really didn't look that good. So I don't need that. So... Anyway, as Christians, we are a little more humble. So the only thing we got in common with the Catholics is the middle part. G they believe Jesus lived, was crucified, and resurrected. And then also communion, which we're going to take today, and baptism, which we're going to do in a couple of months, are very important. So these are the things that we have in common. Look at somebody and say, and that's it. That's it. it might be some more, but that's it. <laughs> Amen. We might be some more that I don't, I'm not I don't, I'm not listing here, but these are the major ones. OK. But the things we don't have in common, we believe as Christians. Well, let me say what they believe. They believe that Jesus offers salvation, but you must work to get it. They believe you have to work to get it. And they believe if you die in your sins, it's still not too late. Your family can come pay the priest to pray you out. Because you're really not in hell. You're just in an area with, a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a, 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 a gate and a slot machine. And you put enough money in there, it'll open up and let you out. <laughs> That's what they believe. They believe the priest can get you out of purgatory. So even after a person has passed on, their soul is in a holding place. And the priest has the power if you give him enough money to get them out. I need footage of that. If I give you money, I need footage of my loved one crossing the great divide. I need proof. If you're going to take my money, don't just tell me it happened. How did it happen and when? What was he wearing? I need to know what that looked like. If you're going to take my money. Amen. But yeah, so they believe Jesus, salvation, you have to work to get it. And we're going to talk about how they work to get it a little later. Then they believe that the Pope can forgive sins. So folks, go into the little booth and do the confession. It's a confessional. And you tell the priest what you did. And he gives you the formula to remedy your situation. Depending on how bad it was. Oh, I stole a bicycle. Oh, that's only two Hail Marys for our fathers. I killed somebody. Oh, that's four Hail Marys, five our fathers, 
and $1,500. Just slide it under the little, <laughs> roll it up and stick it through the little hole. <laughs> yeah, but they believe the Pope can forgive sins, which is not biblical. It's outrageous. No man has the power to forgive sins except Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So that's not right. That's not right. And I taught, I think I taught it in the mother of all gods, how the devil uses that so that the Pope has the sin. So your sins don't make it to the throne for forgiveness. So basically the people that are confessing their sins to the Pope ultimately are going to go to hell. Yeah. Cause the blood of Jesus didn't cover it. Amen. Which is free. Then the third point, only clergy can make decisions in the church. So the church is controlled by the Vatican. The Vatican controls every church in Catholicism. They have one billion members worldwide. One, can you imagine one billion tithe paying members? And most of them celebrities and movie stars and all that? Somebody is raking it in. That's how they ended up in The Godfather. But the, Va <laughs> the Vatican controls the church. So there's a central church sitting on the seven hills, which is the Vatican in Rome controlling everything. And go get mother of all gods. I talk about the seven hills, revelations, all that, how it all relates to that. Okay, so Christians, believers believe that salvation is the free gift of God and you cannot earn it. Now, let me ask this. This is a personal question, and some of y'all are going to be scared to answer it, but have you ever tried to live perfectly to earn salvation? Did you go through that? How many of you were successful? You can't do it. That's, if, if you could do it, Jesus wouldn't have had to come. He had to come because nobody could do it. And I've gone through that perfect period where I try to just be a man. And then when you mess up, oh, you got to start all over like shoots and ladders. <laughs> you got to go. Amen. We look at somebody and say, we need Jesus. So his gift is free. All you have to do is believe. Amen. Amen. And believe isn't a haphazard. Belief, no belief is an action and a lifestyle. All of that is baked in your belief. If you believe you're going to get paid if you do your job, then you're going to do your job. If you believe, if you believe you're not going to get paid, you're going to have to do it. That's belief. Amen. You believe that chair going to hold you up, you just going to sit in it. So if we believe that Jesus is going to give us the free gift of salvation, if we truly believe, then we're going to try our best to live up to his standards. Amen? Amen. And when we can't, when we don't, when we fail, the free gift is there. That's why it's free. Amen? Amen. Only God can forgive sins. And then regular church members, pastors and deacons, elders and all that, can help make decisions in a church. So the churches aren't controlled by an entity okay all right this is Constantine this is his cross his cross that he used was a hybrid of different religions so basically Constantine was the modern day William Murphy Amen. That's what he was. He was the T.D. Jakes of the Roman Empire. What is that? That means that he pretty much allows every belief to come under one roof. And we can all come together. That's why you saw, you know, Jakes, he'd take pictures with Oprah. She's a universalist. He'd take pictures with Diddy. He's a diddleist. I don't know what he is. 
Then they then he taking pictures with LL Cool J, and he's you know just yeah what just different celebrities, and they all believe something different. But it's okay as long as there's this base God love in you, even though it could be all different gods. So that's what Constantine did. So, and Constantine was more of a politician. So let me liken him more to a Trump or Obama. Somebody that has to tread lightly when it comes to things that they don't agree with. They can't just come out and say it's wrong. Well, Trump probably will. Let me take him off of this. But Biden or somebody like that, they'll just tiptoe around it. But you'll know by other decisions, like his decisions to make today, Transgender Day. Yeah, Resurrection Day, he made it Transgender Day. Yeah, that's on WhiteHouse.gov. That's real. So they do stuff like that so you'll kind of know, but then they'll, you know. And I just, you know, when it happened, I was like, Lord, what are all these church folks that vote for him? What are they going to say now? Well... He, you know, he got to work both sides now. Constantine is back. So the Roman Empire merged Christianity with paganism and all religions were blended together to satisfy each religious group under the rule of Constantine the Great. So this is what he did. Even though, and he did not put, let me say this, he did not put Worship on Sunday instead of the Sabbath day. Okay? Sabbath day was never for the worship. Sabbath day is for something that's spelled R-E-S-T. You rest. Look at somebody say you rest on the Sabbath day. You don't have church on the Sabbath. How you have church on the day of rest? You going somewhere and doing something. The day of rest, you're supposed to be resting. That is just... I don't even, I don't understand. Day of Pentecost, church gatherings, all of them were on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. Not the Sabbath. So quit inviting folks to your house on Saturday talking about shh. What? You know how they slip in the church. I'm just, uh, all I'm doing is house clean. We, you know, all these folk, it's a lot of folk. Got a house clean. This, if you're a Sabbath keeper, this ain't your church. Amen. Amen. We believe that Jesus is our rest. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and I'll be your Sabbath every day of the week. It's just foolishness. There ain't nobody having, nobody in the Bible had church on the Sabbath day. They try to say, Constantine, that's going to be the more. I get a Sunday law book every week, don't I, mother? I, and I throw them in the trash right there. I don't care how thick it is. Quit sending me that. That's heresy. I ain't no seven day Adventist. It's heresy. Heresy. Ain't no Sunday law. That's foolishness. Ellen White was a false prophetess. I just need to straighten it out in here so folk can know where they, what they're falling off into. Okay. Even though he claimed to be Christian, he accepted all religions and promoted religious tolerance so that all belief systems would support his rule. This practice is known as the what? Leaven of Herod. What did Herod do? Herod, I, he was everybody's uh, in everybody's religion and he merged them all together he looked like he's a Christian when he was with the Christians then he was a pagan when he was with the pagans leaven represents uh, this practice is known as the leaven of Herod that Jesus spoke against leaven represents influence and Herod being a leader of the government used his what? influence in government to do what? Influenced the church. Y'all saw Biden was at the black church. Now, I don't know if he knew he was there. Now, and I'm not even trying to be funny. I, res yeah, I respect him as a president. I'm not trying to be funny, but I saw the video. 
they was clapping and stuff and he was that, that's real I'm not I'm gonna put the video in there yeah so but he was why was he there to influence the church to vote for him right yeah he went to the black church because black people are supposed to vote for him that's what you've been told if you black you vote for him and you hate Trump you don't know why you hate Trump you just hate him because you black you supposed to because the media told you to yeah and now they knew see listen they knew that there was a power and anointing in the African American community so they you know this wasn't even about numbers because there's way more whites than blacks they just knew from our oppression and suffering we were more spiritual in some areas does that make sense okay that ain't racist that's just the way it is all the the spirituals negro all that stuff we were singing all of that it was because of our oppression so we ended up with talent anointed power all those things based on the prayers when we were oppressed when you oppress a people their prayers are going to be stronger because they praying to get free okay so they knew if we attack them and then wrap immorality around them we can use their spiritual influence to push the immoral agenda that's why Barack came in and what was the first thing he did gay marriage Biden is in what is he doing transgender you flip through the channels, every other channel is a drag show. Nobody's even watching drag shows. The ratings of drag shows are horrible. Nobody watches them. They're on TV so your child will accidentally land on it. I know I'm teaching. Yeah, and so that's what happened. So that, that's why when you're talking to your relatives... If you bring up Trump, oh, no, nah, he, he racist, he racist. Well, I saw like a hundred pictures of him with hood Negroes that rap. <laughs> riding in the car with him. And if he racist, boy, he sure hiding it. <laughs> then I saw Biden insulting black people. Oh, no, but no, 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 man. See, that's no, no, because they want our influence you don't think we can influence a culture country singers are rapping now bluegrass singers wearing Jordans they all wear Converse all stars Chuck Taylors that's synonymous with bluegrass the low top yeah we can influence a culture so they need us to push the immorality of a culture so they wrap the immorality around us so we'll argue on their side this practice is known as 11 of Herod so this influence Larry, uh, Herod used his influence in government to influence the church Mark 8 and 15 says, and he charged them. Jesus said, take heed, beware of the what? Leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of what? Herod. Because the leaven of Herod will make you sell out. And it's just a random church. I don't even know who church that is. But Easter season is a big deal in America because of sales and celebrations that occur. That's why Easter's big. But it is not a Christian holiday. I'm sorry. Somebody got a basket in the car with all that fake green grass. If somebody hid eggs. <laughs> it's not a Christian holiday. Even though many believers stopped using the term Easter because once this knowledge came out, the church has changed it. That's where we got Resurrection Day. It used to be Easter, and then it became, in the 80s, Resurrection Day. Why? Because knowledge came out that Easter is not 
a Christian holiday. Right? And so as we progressed, it became resurrection. We started calling it resurrection. I got used to calling it resurrection. Well, now Easter's back. Kind of like Halloween. Churches have stopped doing Halloween, Halloween, and now trunk or treat. Whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's just folks say, hey, man, I need some members, Doc. So I ain't preaching that. I need members. Won't you preach the truth and get the members that'll come for the truth? Yeah. Amen. That's all we're going to do in here. We don't have a billboard nowhere. We ain't passing out leaflets and fly nothing. You're going to come for the truth or that's it. But even though many believers stopped using the term Easter and began calling it Resurrection Sunday, many have gone back to Easter in efforts to lure members for the sake of popularity and finances. Now, I know you got a big building you got to pay for. But what was our message last week? Did you ask God, should you build that? I'm not building a building and I got 15 pres prescription drugs I got to take every day. I went in one pastor's office. His office looked like CVS. I said, brother, he got machines and everything. Hold on, man. I got to hook myself up to this. What? But his mortgage was a hundred grand a month. Yeah, that'll you hook me up to something. <laughs> hook me up. Hook me up. Yeah, built that big old church. He didn't take, he, he didn't know that once he built it in the mega church era would end that he'd be stuck with a big building and can't fill it up. Taking chairs out every month. I'd be taking chairs out and selling them. This is the chair depot. <laughs> yeah, but they do it to lure members and get folks to come. But man, it ain't worth it. Look at somebody say, it ain't worth it. All right. Carnival. Yeah, this, this all goes together. So. Mm-mm. This is the jab jab is more in the Caribbean islands. Jab jab means devil. Probably because of the horns or the pitchfork or something. But it means devil. But they celebrate jab jab, which is carnival. And that's why they dress up like devils. And then, of course, in other countries, they do the same thing. All in the Caribbean, South America, all of this, they celebrate what they call carnival. Carnival is a festival. You know, in America, we say carnival. I'm looking for a clown and somebody playing a pipe organ. Bleep, 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 you know what I'm saying? That was our carnival. Remember the little hood carnival at Seminary South? Look, anybody remember Seminary South? Yeah, <laughs> you remember? See, I got some people in there. Hey, at that little hood carnival in there, you can't get on the ride, though. It might not finish. The good thing is, they would, if they heard something, they'd stop it. They'd let us off. They'd let us off. They hear something, hey, y'all got to get off. I have to jump? I'm in the air. Hey, man, it's better to jump. <laughs> Can't have no carnival with just one truck. One truck brought everything. You got 30 rides. But that was our carnival. Y'all remember Seminary South? Our parents would take us there and that would be our babysitter. Death defying rides. Come back, you have to count. No, nope. okay, everybody's good. Carnival is a festival which can be traced back to Roman Saturnalia, a festival held in mid-December to honor the god Saturn with feasting given and role reversal. Role reversal is always involved in Satanism. Role reversal. Men becoming women, women becoming men. Men liking men, women liking women. That's Satan's way because it's anti-creation. Okay, God is the creator. He's anti the creator, so it's anti-creation. All right? The word carnival means to put away flesh. That's the word. This name derives from the denial of meat during Lent. Who celebrates Lent? Catholics, okay. First Timothy 4 and 3, 
foresaw for all of this length and all of this denial of meat. It said that in the last days or in this time, they will be forbidden to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received. How many of you know that your steak was created to be received? Ribeye and tenderloin and oh my goodness receive <laughs> come on Memphis brisket and and tips and hmm. that's meat man I'm eating meat. The Bible says, so all this abstaining from meat is not healthy anyway. Amen. Amen. And so we ain't, ain't no vegans. Well, let me tell you this. See, somebody, what? Yeah. You're not a vegan if you're a Christian. You can be vegetarian. But the term vegan is wicked. So look at somebody and say, quit calling yourself that. That comes from witch. See, the witches believe you can't eat anything with a face because everything with a face is sacred. My diet tells me it needs a face. I be holding stuff up the land and what about this? It only got one eye. That's a face. <laughs> this squid, he got one eye. That's a, that's a face. That qualifies. <laughs> Man, a duck jumped in our pool the other day again and had 10 babies in my pool. So, you know, Cam and Vic was dead. She was holding Xander. And, you know, they from upstate. They're not used to that. And I just saw it. I went in the house. Y'all know what I did. And I came back. <laughs> and they went crazy. Oh, no! Oh, Cam ran in the house and he was screaming, Lord Jesus, Jesus, stop him, stop daddy, stop daddy. And I, I couldn't even shoot the duck, I was laughing at Cam. <laughs> I didn't shoot it, I didn't shoot it. I said, man, no, it's a 22, it's a 22 pellet, it's not a shotgun. He's like, oh Lord, I was just worried. <laughs> it was hilarious. That was one of the funniest moments in our house history. But them ducks yelled all night. They mama left them. She was a trifling single mother. She jumped out that water. They were stuck in the water. They couldn't get out the pool. The water was too low. So she looked at them. She's like, all right then. Knack, knack. Knack, knack, knack. I'm out of here. I said, look at her. I should have shot her. I should have shot her. She would have tasted good for Easter service. <laughs> I'm too, my mom was like, you too transparent. Shut up. Might be an animal activist. Ace Ventura might be an audience. Hush. But yeah, but I didn't kill it, but them ducks yelled all night. Nyah, nyah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I woke up that morning out there, yeah, yeah, for their mama. And I was like, okay, keep yelling. Your mama ain't gonna come get you. But in this neighborhood, we right by a lake. Something gonna get you. And I mean, the, it started dying down. First you heard five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you heard three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you heard one. Yeah, yeah. And then there were none. Why am I talking about this and I have a whole sermon? Let me, let me finish. <laughs> For the, forbidden. <laughs> but we eat meat if you're going to take time because I've gone 90 days without meat. I, had, I went on a, a fast to get uh, acid out of my body that my doctor put me on at one point. So I went 90 days without meat, but I was on a vegetarian diet. I wasn't no vegan. Amen. So get away from these old earthy folks. These old weed smoking earthy, you know, ain't gonna eat meat, but you gonna smoke the Buddha? <sighs> and 
And don't send me no video with their truth on it. I don't want to hear from no weed smoker. Amen. He might be high when he said it. Boy, folks, I tell you, they don't want to hear the preacher. Anybody but the preacher. The American carnival is known as Fat Tuesday or Mardi Gras. This is very significant to Easter. This carnival celebrates revelry, which is partying, indulgence, excessive actions coupled with paganism to prepare for the fasting of Lent. So what they do is they get as raunchy, nasty, so they can get it all out before they do their 40-day Lent fast. So it's basically get as raunchy and sexually charged and high and everything else as you can. So you can, you know, get it all out because 40 days you got to go without it. So you're going to do 40 days worth of foolishness on Tuesday. Yeah, Mardi Gras. This carnival celebrates all those things. Each year in New Orleans, the celebration of sin and lust is done excessively during this time. Ash Wednesday immediately follows Mardi Gras. So now you done partied yourself and just gotten so raunchy until now you're just supposed to be in sackcloth and ashes. Because now you sorry, even though you planned it that way. So instead of not doing it, you do it and get the ashes. Ash Wednesday immediately follows Mardi Gras, which is a demonic mediation of the priest to ritually have ashes smeared on foreheads in the shape of a cross. The ashes cannot be washed off, but must be worn around all day as a morbid focus on death and darkness. So basically, you're disfiguring yourself with the ashes to show your sorriness for how raunchy you were the previous night. And the priest puts it on you because he has the power to demote you as well as exonerate you. Y'all still listening? During Ash Wednesday, Catholics are called to fast as well as every Friday during Lent. But the Bible, see, Catholicism, the reason it can't be Christianity because it does everything that the Bible says don't do. The Bible tell you don't put no ashes. It's look, read it. Matthew 6, 16. Moreover, when you fast, do not be as the Catholics. Or hypocrites of a what? Now, ashes represents sadness. When somebody got in sackcloth and ashes, they were sad and sorrowful before the Lord. So he just sat here and told you, don't, don't do that. Like the hypocrites, for they do what? Disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. This is describing it explicitly. It's like they went to the Bible and said, okay, this says don't do this. Let's do it. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fast, anoint thy head and then do what? Wash that face. Wash that ash off that ash now some of y'all might have the other ash and you need lotion that don't wash off washing it'll make more amen you need some chemicals but you know the ash I'm talking about but yeah it said wash thy face that thou appear not unto men to fast but unto the father which is in secret so basically God is saying don't do this and yet the Catholics persist to do it every year the day after Fat Tuesday. Then Lent starts, which is 40 days. Lent is a Catholic 40-day observation and fast to commemorate the 40-day fast of Jesus. Look at somebody and say, you not Jesus. Not Jesus. Amen. And you not doing the fast Jesus did. <laughs> Jesus went 40 days with nothing. He didn't just wait till Friday. But then you go on this 40-day fast of Jesus... 
and it's done six weeks leading up to Maundy Thursday. That's the day before Good Friday. All this is their Easter, y'all. During the period, you must give up something for 40 days, which is not biblical. It's not biblical to give up sin for 40 days. You don't give up. When you get saved, you give up sin, period. They're going to give it up 40 days and then circle that 41 day. Oh, oh, oh yes. then you didn't give it up. If it's still in your heart, you didn't give it up. Amen? I know I'm preaching in here. Lent is used for fasting from sin and from vice, forsaken sin and sinful ways. It is a season. Look at somebody say season. It's just a season. They only save for a season. But it is a season for penance, which means sorrow for sin and conversion to God. Jeremiah Spoke about them too. He said, when they fast, talking about these folks, Catholics, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offerings and oblation, I will not accept them. Why? Because you're not giving up anything permanently. You're only giving it up to meet the sacrament requirements for your organization. That's not good enough. Monday Thursday or Holy Thursday marks the end of Lent. So when Holy Thursday comes, Lent is over. You can go back to what you was doing in remembrance of the Last Supper, and it's followed by Fish Fry Friday. Most folk in here have no idea why they serve fried fish at all the restaurants on Friday. You used to line up at Wyatt's and Luby's, or even in the high school. They serve fish on Friday. Yeah, it was Catholic. When I said they had a billion members, do you know how many that is? That's a lot of influence over the world. So a lot of things became Catholic without a Protestant uh, kickback. Nobody challenged it. So Fish Fry Friday came, and that was the tradition to consume fish on Good Friday. It stopped, but when I was young, hey, we knew. Thursday came, we got our ketchup packages. And if you was from up north, you got the Frank's Red Hot ready. You from down south, you had the Louisiana ready. Both of them shake up the same. And we got ready. If you had Tabasco, you weren't black. <laughs> Remember when you ask for some hot sauce and they bring that Tabasco, you like. <laughs> you supposed to cook with this man. <laughs> Friday was named after Freya. That's this, this woman right here. The fish moon goddess, and eating fish on Friday was to honor her. Friday is the same as Oshan, Ishtar, Ashtoreth, Starde, uh, Samiramis, Mamiwata, all of that. Siren Diva, woman with a tail in the water, messing stuff up, the mermaid spirit. All of that's the same, same woman. Freya was the Norse mythology version. So each one, Egyptian, Greek, Roman, they all got their own, and Norse which is, you know, Odin and uh, Loki and all of them guys. Those, that's North mythology. This, is, this practice also goes back to Dagon of Babylon. Y'all remember Dagon? That's the fish, priest of fish. So he was the priest of fish. Remember he was in there with the Holy of Holies, the statue? They put him in there and then they came back. <laughs> they had a statue fight. They got hands was cut off, he laying on the ground. They're like, man, what happened in there? <laughs> and the priest, yeah, he had to bow before the Holy of Holies. The statue had to bow. Look at somebody and say, I serve a powerful God. When a statue go to bow, and oh. 
Don't put me in here. <laughs> and then the mitre, which is the hat that the Pope is wearing right there, that symbolizes the fish, as well as the Christian symbol for fish. All of this stuff dates back to Constantine's merge of Christianity and all the other religions, and he gave them all similar symbols, so nobody would be against anyone. Does that make sense? Y'all yeah. still with me? Yeah. Okay. Parallels. I'm almost done. Eostra is the Anglo-Saxon version of Ischar, Ashtoreth, and Sumerimus, the Sumerian goddess of love and war, who is the moon goddess and wife of Baal. So it's the same person. Eostra is the Anglo-Saxon version of Ishtar, Ashtoreth, and Sumerimus as well. And so according to Sumerian lore, Ishtar was the wife of the Sumerian god Tammuz. Both are spoken of in the Bible. Tammuz is mentioned in Ezekiel 8 and 14. Ishtar called Ashtoreth and queen of heaven in reference in Judges 2, 13, Judges 10, 6, and Jeremiah 44, 17, and elsewhere. Now, Eostra is a little different than Freya. Okay, they're, they're really the same person, and they all have the same thing going on. So that's why it was Freya in one slide, now it's Eostra in this one. But it's still the same thing. This picture I show it all the time. It looks like Jesus and Mary. This is from Catholicism. Catholics, higher up Catholics, know that this is not Jesus and Mary. They know that this is the queen of heaven and her son. They know that. Like, they know, no. In Santeria, magic. If you walk into a place, one of the stores in New York, where you buy the Santeria magic, they'll have candles in there with these pictures on it to do magic with. They know that that's not Jesus and Mary. So if you got a candle with any of this on it, break it! Amen! Amen. Amen. But the Queen of Heaven judges Jeremiah also in the book of Acts is mentioned as well. People weeping for Tammuz, praying to baking cakes to the queen of heaven, all of these things. These are all queens of heaven and Eostra was one of them. Yeah, so this is Beyonce dressed as Freya, the Norse mythology goddess because that's the equivalent of Oshun. When she, Oshun, when she was pregnant, she was Oshun. Okay. The Sumerian tale states that Tammuz died and then Ishtar Sumerius, Sumerimus followed him to the underworld, leaving the earth deprived of its fertility. She and Tammuz were rescued from death when the queen of the dead allowed a heavenly messenger to sprinkle them with the what? You knew it had to be the water. With the water of life. This allowed them to return to the light of the sun for six months of each year. For the other six months, they had to return to the land of the dead creating the winter spring celebrations, which is where we get the winter spring sol uh, solstice. So that's where all of this comes from. This is where Easter comes from. I'm just giving y'all the background of it. Now this is another picture. I had to cover it up because the breast was exposed, but this is the Ostra. Uh, this is, you know, some drawings that they did back in the day of the bunnies and the, all of the stuff that is associated with Easter. Easter was originally created as a celebration of these events in worship to the goddess of fertility and the power of the sun. The name Easter is said to have derived from Eostra Ishtar. Constantine merged the winter solstice, the celebration of Astarte, and the Christian celebrations of Christ's resurrection all together for political reasons. Okay, so this is how it all got merged together. Why is there eggs, bunnies, and candy? What does that have to do with Resurrection Sunday? Look at somebody and say, nothing. 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 No, the egg represents life. I, what? No egg crack. I didn't come out no cracked egg. And Jesus wasn't in one either. Amen. And what the chocolate bunny represent? <laughs> I was about to say something real racist. But it's, <laughs> it's resurrection Sunday. I'm going to let it go. Yeah. Easter's paganism pre predates Christ's resurrection. So all this symbolism was happening before Jesus' resurrection. 
Secular symbolism used during Easter is pagan and has no significance to Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So folks quit trying to do that. The eggs represent the rebirth or fertility as well as the bunny rabbits because of the Sumerian goddess of fertility. Chocolate Easter bunnies and eggs, marshmallow chicks, cat berries. Somebody got them in their purse. They're going to melt. <laughs> Pastel colors, candies of all sorts. All of this have pagan origins. And ancient pagans' belief is to ingest the God you worship. Likewise, the candy, Easter bunnies, and eggs allow one to ingest the goddess of fertility in worship to her. So one can lay hold to her strength, vitality, and fertility. That's where it came from. This is why the eggs are boiled and colored to be more pleasing to the eyes and the stomach. So all of this is pagan. That's how it associated itself with Easter. Easter is mentioned in the Bible only once, and it is not a mistranslation of the word Pasha, which means Passover. Pasha appears 29 times in the New Testament. 28 of those times the word is rendered Passover in reference to the night when the Lord passed over the Israelites and killed all the firstborn of Egypt, thus setting Israel free from 400 years of bondage. We know that. The occurrence of the word Easter in the Bible in Acts 12, 4 is referring to the pagan Easter Eostra celebration because the feast of unleavened bread that follows Jewish Passover had already occurred. The Bible was specifically referring to Herod celebrating Easter. Why wouldn't he? He was a pagan. The sunrise service are the most pagan events of the whole Easter weekend. Look at somebody. You remember you had to do that sunrise service? You wake up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., drive out to the cemetery. Now, even when Mary them came looking for Jesus at the cemetery, the angel said, why are you seeking the living among the dead? That's all I needed to hear. I don't go to them. Yeah, sunrise services are pagan. The rising sun gathering during the solstice was worship of the sun god rising from the underworld. Remember I tell you that story. It had nothing to do with Christ's resurrection. They were doing this before Jesus died. Had nothing to do with his resurrection because no one gathered in the graveyard to watch Jesus rise from the dead. Now if they had done it then, then yeah, we're supposed to go do it. But what are you out there for? You got a keyboard and Amps, <laughs> guitar picking, and man, you, you something might wake up you wasn't trying to wake up. <laughs> when you get out of there, they having church at the graveyard. <laughs> Amen. But you know, folks, this don't make no sense. Now, here's the story. This is Ezekiel, way in Old Testament. It says, Then he said unto me, Thou hast seen this, O son of man. Turn thee yet again, and thou wilt see great abomination, greater ones than these. And he brought me in the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their back towards the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east. They were doing this, watching the sun toward the east, worshiping Ra, the sun god. So that's what I'm saying. These things have pagan origins. So we as a church, and then it needs to make sense. Summary! I hope this helped you. Modern day Easter is patterned after the pagan parallels of Samaria. Sem Samirmus and Nimrod. The enemy created a false virgin birth story years prior to the true story and now the pagan celebration and the celebration of Christ's resurrection has overlapped. So y'all know that. I got a video about that. I think it's part five of the Truth Behind Hip Hop where I talk about the parallels. The enemy created a false virgin birth story years prior to the true story. This practice is common living in a pagan society for things to overlap. However, we must use, look at somebody say balance, when we are trying to be in this world and not of this world. 
Amen. So don't slap yourself if you accidentally say Easter. Talking to your parents, talking to folks that don't have this knowledge, let them say Easter. You know what I'm saying? They'll be like, oh, oh don't say that. <laughs> but you know, you got to have balance because you're in the world. you at work. Don't try to preach this message at work. you at work. Work at work. Amen. Unless your job is preaching, work at work. <laughs> now, if they ask you, that's different. But yeah, you got to use balance. Amen. If your grandmama, they hiding eggs, don't go over there with tracks. <laughs> hiding tracks. <laughs> I mean, you got to say this stuff because folk don't have balance. Amen. It ain't going to hurt you. You just have an understanding. This is what we going to do for my house. We ain't hunting no eggs. Amen. Xander ain't looking for no eggs. I mean, we just, we just don't. Amen. We must realize that our culture is full of paganism. We live in Babylon reborn. So it is impossible to live in our world without observing some kind of pagan celebration. Or even recognizing the pagan days of the week. That's Friday, Friday day. That's where we get Friday, Saturn day, Sun God day, Moon day. All of them are named after pagan deities. All the planets are named after pagan. We must have balance. This does not mean that we celebrate our Savior with eggs, rabbits, or even Santa Claus. But we do have authority in the earth to choose to celebrate our loved ones in Christ's birth, death, resurrection, if we desire. Amen. Amen? That's our prerogative. So don't come telling me, then nowhere in the Bible did they celebrate birthdays. Well, I, my birthday wasn't in there. I'm celebrating my birthday. Amen. Nevertheless, we must be careful in adopting pagan practices that may lead to indirect worship of false gods when we are aware of it. Amen. Because the enemy knew the seed of the woman would bring forth Christ, he created a false seed and a false messiah. Because of the erroneous virgin birth story parallels throughout all civilizations, there are many celebrations that point to false gods instead of the true Messiah. But we must remember that the true story is the only real story. Amen? Christ was born and he died and, and he's what? He is risen. That's the true story. So if we choose to honor his events, then it's our prerogative. After all, the false God stories are mostly fables created to keep people away from the true Messiah. And it's our job to bring people to the truth. Ultimately, when we celebrate Christ, we must not allow pagan beliefs to enter in our celebrations. Even if, the, if it parallels the pagan dates, times, and events. Amen? I hope this gave you a good understanding. Colossians 2 and 16. Let no man therefore judge you in what? So this isn't to argue about. This isn't to argue about. This is so that you will have the knowledge so that you can make sure you're doing what you need to do. Amen. 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 This isn't up for argument, so don't get into a dispute with anyone about it. Sabbath day and all of that, don't get in disputes. Amen. Amen. Now, you're not going to teach a different doctrine in here than what we believe at ABC. But with outside, with your family and different things, be very careful. Don't, don't, don't get into arguments because these aren't, most of the time, these aren't heaven and hell issues anyway. These are just things we do to safeguard ourselves from the enemy. Amen? Everyone stand to your feet. I know somebody wished they was preached and yelled crazy today, but I got to do what the Lord tells me to do. Amen? Amen. We're growing, kind of growing church, and we want everybody to know what is happening. So everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for information that helps us. Thank you for information that teaches us. Thank you for information that keeps us from harm. Father God, thank you, Lord, for information that enlightens us. Thank you for information that matures us. And Father God, 
Continue to give us knowledge in this church as a fellowship. Continue to give us what we need as we're rearing and raising the next generation of believers. We can help our children with this. We can help them with understanding. We can explain things to them better. We can keep them from, even though maybe all of their friends at school or different places are doing something different, God, you're giving us what they need through the word, and we thank you for it. And Father, I ask that you continue to enlighten this body, continue to bless this body, continue to protect us from harm, and Lord, most importantly, continue to fill us with your Holy Ghost power so that when we leave this place, we can make a stand for you in this hour like never before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated.